Yo everybody, what's going on? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. I woke up bright and early this morning, like real early. It's uh, 6 a.m. right now, and I'm about to embark on a journey three hours south. We're going to uh, Calgary to check out the brick bin, which is gonna be pretty epic because uh, I've got a, a special shopping video that I'm filming this morning. It's gonna be pretty cool. Pretty excited about it, to tell you the truth. Look at all these Lego sets I just finished reviewing the other day. This is like all 2024 stuff. We've got all the Speed Champions, the mid-scale ships, also the MP44, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Stitch, some Brickheads, and the Medieval Markets. For now, they're just living on my desk because I don't really know where to put them. I want to put this in the campground. I guess I could put this by the other mid-scale ships and these are the other speed champions, but I just haven't had a chance to put them away yet. So I'm just leaving them beautifully displayed just like that. But down here is uh, sort of a mess. Goodness. I can't wait to clean this mess up and start transforming this basement. Ah, but we'll worry about that another day because I've got to hit the road. Got to make sure I have all my important stuff such as my camera bag. Got to get some gas as well. And then most importantly, I got a Tim Hortons breakfast. It's 6.23 a.m. August 8th, 2004. Mrs. Brixie and I actually decided to swap vehicles because we wanted the newer, safer vehicle to be the baby mobile. This used to be the baby mobile, but now it's the Brixie mobile. But this one here has been having uh, some electrical issues. And for some reason, it thinks it's 2004. I don't know why. August 8th, 2004. And every time I uh, switch it back, like to the current date, when I turn it on, it goes back to that date. It's so weird. This is like having some electrical issues. I was like, you know what? I don't feel safe with the children in that car, so, or in this car, so just give it to me and I'll make this the everyday commuter for me, which is actually smart because I'm driving back and forth to work every day now and this one is more fuel efficient so I'm back in my old car the good old Honda CRV but you know what it's funny ever since I took over there's been no issues ever since I've been driving this vehicle every day there's been no battery or electrical related issues <laughs> so Jose's got the newer uh, vehicle which is good because once again it's safer for the kids but we're about uh, 45 minutes into my commute. Haven't quite hit red there yet, so just ripping the beautiful highways of Alberta. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you saw this in the last clip, but I left a piece of my breakfast on my jacket. <laughs> There's just a tomato chilling. There's a tomato chilling on my coat. <laughs> After three hours of non-stop driving, I've arrived at the Brick Bin. So I just wrapped up my shopping trip at the Brick Bin. Woo! <laughs> oh my gosh. It's the Legos Lego shopping hall of all time. It was ridiculous. It's back there. Pretty wild. So I've got a, a special event planned for everything that I purchased. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. But now that I'm done there, I sort of want to just go home like it's approaching one o'clock it's like I could go to the other brick bin location I could go to the Lego store here I could hit up some Walmart some Toys R Us's but then it's gonna get later in the, the evening as I drive home and I pretty much have all of those things at home like I have a Lego store I have Toys R Us I have Walmart so I could just do that at home I came here specifically to go to the brick bin because it's got an insane selection of new used and sealed and built and whatever every type of set that you can imagine also like all the mini things in the in the bulk lego it's just insane oh my gosh i got carried away in there though i haven't eaten since this morning since the uh the 6 a.m timmy's run so i've got to find something to eat gonna grab some tim hortons for the way home too i gotta get some gas and look at this rig that is quite the mercedes holy cow here's my highway rant for the ride home so you know when you're driving on the highway 
and there's usually, like, it's pretty busy, there's a bunch of cars. I typically go the same speed the whole time. I use cruise control and I go 120 kilometers an hour the whole way home. But it's funny because some people don't do that. I have passed the same guy five times because he just can't decide how fast he wants to go. Sometimes he's going 110, sometimes he's going 130, sometimes he's going 120. And it's like, buddy, like I've passed you five times. Like, what, what are you doing? Like, just set it and forget it, you know? Like, uh, <laughs> it's, it's so funny sometimes. And also sometimes people just leave like no following distance at all. Like there's just zero following distance. They're like riding right on your tail. It's like, buddy, like you're on the highway, leave a little bit of following distance. I know you're in a big rush, but like I got my cruise control on. If I'm in the left, left lane, I'm passing somebody at 120 kilometers an hour. I am not gonna speed up to 130 to accommodate you. I am just gonna go my 120 and pass the guy and I'll move back into the slow lane eventually, but just be patient and don't ride my butt for the next 30 seconds. Ah. Highway rent over. I made it home safe and it's a new day. About to whip up some breakfast here and head on out to the new studio. I moved all of those uh, sets that I had built on my table there. And I want to give you a little sneak peek at what I got from the brick pen. A little Grand Admiral Thrawn action. And a Wooly Mammoth. I have never seen a Lego Wooly Mammoth before. And now I have one in my possession. You got a Raptor here too. A Killer Croc Big Fig. And for an unknown reason, I spent way too much money obtaining a sealed Stranger Things, The Upside Down. And much, much, much more than just that. So make sure you stay tuned for my crazy shopping video because it's the biggest one of all time. And I've got a really cool plan for all of the items I obtained. So I'm just waiting for a text message from the gas fitter. He's going to give me a 30 minute heads up as to when he's going to be at the new studio so he can fit some gas and then we're going to head over there and continue construction and I think the kids just woke up too. Can you say hello to everybody this morning, Ben? He's got his milk. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to go for a run around here. Make sure all my toys are still here. All right, I'm here. And you know what? One major thing has happened since the last time we checked this place out. And that is the priming of the cabinets. And check out what a difference it makes. So there's the drywall, all nicely taped and mudded. And then bam, the cabinets, which used to be MDF. Wow, that looks so much better. Oh my gosh, just a little bit of paint improves it like night and day. And in fact, that's just primer. That's just a couple coats of primer. So they're not even painted to the color that they're going to be. But look at that. Oh, it's coming together every day, little by little. And today we're gonna to be taking care of the gas fitting. So we're gonna be hooking up the uh, gas pipe, which is right there to the infrared heater. So check it out. This furnace has a uh, humidifier and I'm replacing the filter. So there's the new filter and there's the old filter. Those guys rigged that up real quickly. So you can see the gas line right there. So they added that little piece that branches off and runs underneath it. And then it comes over here, goes up toward the ceiling and then bends down. And there's like a little flex hose right there that feeds into the infrared heater. So that is done. The only thing that I need now is power. I need the electricians to come back and run the power to the heaters so that it heats everything. Oh my gosh, the power lines are over there. They just need to run a BX cable from there to over there and this thing is gonna be blazing. Now everybody's concerned that this is only gonna heat the stuff that's, well not everybody, some people are concerned that it's only gonna heat the stuff like the walls and the Lego and the tables that are right underneath it. Some people are thinking that this isn't gonna heat the rest of the area, but every professional that I've talked to says, 
dude, that thing's going to emit so much heat that your furnace is barely going to run. The thermostat for the furnace is in the front rooms. And they're like, I guarantee that this thing is going to keep the whole place warm. So at this point, I don't really know who to believe. The commenters that are saying that that's not going to keep my place warm or the professionals that installed it and also all of the other tradesmen that have walked through this building. I don't know who to believe. I guess we'll find out when the power's on and the thing is actually going. But if it's cold up there, then I guess I'll just have to put a couple space heaters up there and have to live with the consequences of not using a different type of heat. But I'm confident that that is going to provide enough heat for this whole facility, like honestly. Or maybe if it doesn't, then what I can do is, I don't know, reroute some heat off the furnace so that one of these vents that feeds into the washroom is also feeding upstairs in that area. But my theory is this heat rises and I think it's gonna be warm up there no matter what. I mean, come on, this big tube heater isn't gonna provide any heat up there as it's blasting heat down here. The heat's gotta go somewhere. I mean, the heat just isn't gonna disappear, but maybe some commenters are right. I don't know. You guys are putting worry in me. You're putting worry in me, that's for sure. But. I, I'm pretty positive that it's gonna be fine. While they were installing that, I actually gave a plumber a call and they do free quotes, which is like, sweet, I, I dig that. Anyone who's willing to come on site and do a free quote, I love that business model. I'll take advantage of that all day long, but they're gonna come take a look at this and see what they can do about this pipe. So I figured I'd head home because there wasn't really much else that I could do there, but the plumber did come by and they're going to give us a quote on moving that pipe. It was a big mystery. I didn't know where to turn the water off. I went into the uh, electrical or into the like the utility room on the side of the building and it wasn't in there. The plumber left and he's like, you gotta figure out how to turn the water off. So I uh, went into the neighboring unit and I was like, hey guys, like, where's, the, where's the water coming? They're like, oh, it comes in in our bay. So I figured out where that is. So they'll be able to nail down uh, a quote on that and also a time frame for that. I just gotta make sure that I notify everybody that the water's gonna be off. So a little bit of coordination on my end, I guess. And then I also got a hold of the electrician. They're saying Wednesday morning, so that's gonna get wrapped up. That's gonna be excellent. And I think Paul is coming back tonight. All he's doing is just doing a little bit of uh, drywall mud. That stuff has to chill, like each coat has to chill for 24 hours. So two more days of that drywall mud and then uh, should be done. I feel like things are sort of scheduled, sort of lined up. I'm feeling pretty good about it. And I just decided to come home because I've got some other stuff i got to wrap up involving uh, the video I filmed at the brick bin yesterday. And uh, tomorrow's a new day, I guess. I don't really know what else to do over there. Just sort of waiting around, waiting for things to happen. Millie, what does the dinosaur say? Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> Millie loves dinosaurs. So does Benjamin. Millie, what does a chicken say? <laughs> you can do it too. That's the first time you said it. Millie, where's the duck? <laughs> where's the duck? Where's the duck? Wow. <laughs> Millie, where's your hair? Is that your hair? Where's your teeth? Where's your teeth? <laughs> where's your teeth? Where are your cheeks? Ah, you're so smart. Wow. Hard to believe, eh, everybody? What are you cooking today, Millie? You're eating shreddies <laughs> while cooking? Oh, she's a hungry, hungry, hungry lady. Look at this. Mrs. Brixie's making some tortellini alfredo with mushrooms and broccoli for the kids. Oh, she's a hungry lady. You're going to descale the uh, coffee machine for us? Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah. So I laughed at a comment the other day because somebody was like, dude, clean your house. It's like, man, you don't have twins. Like, you... You don't understand, like, the chaos. Like, you'll clean this up, and it'll be back like this two minutes later. There is no point in cleaning it up 
until they go to sleep for the day. And then it's like three, four times a day, it's like this many dishes. Like Sounds I'm, like someone who doesn't have kids. Yeah, like it, like it's ridiculous. It's like we are clean yeah, people. Like if you met me pre-kids, like me and Jose, it would, it's like we were neat freaks. But now it's like when you have kids, you're just like, yeah, you just give up. You, there's just no point in trying to keep it tidy. Right, Ben? Because it's not how they want it. If it's a mess like this, that just means they had a lot of fun. And I mean, this right here on our kitchen table, that's my fault. There's just like no work-life balance here. A lot of the time, the Lego will like make its way up onto the kitchen table just because you're looking after kids and you're trying to do work while you're looking after kids. And then this table becomes a pretty hot mess, I've got to say. But with that said, I hope once the studio is ready to go, I can put all the work stuff at the studio and all the kids stuff in the basement so up here is actually relatively tidy. That's the goal, right kids? You two, gonna go downstairs. See, look, I've dried and put away three sinkfuls of dishes already and I'm about to work on the floor just for one meal, it's insane. Having three furry animals doesn't help with the mess either. But obviously, I love my fur animals and I love my tiny humans as well. However, that comment just sparked me here. It just sparked me. I told Mrs. Brixie, once we bathe and put the kids to sleep, we're going to set timers on our phone for an hour and we're just going to go like berserk in our house. And we're just going to go and just put everything away. Every stray piece of clothing. All the laundry. We're going to just go nuts we're gonna clean everything so this place is spotless because it just feels great to do that sometimes the reality is is our lives have changed jose and i just have way less free time like for example right now it's it's 7 15 we just bathed and we put the kids to sleep and they were up at 7 30 so there's 12 hours of the day that's dedicated to our children because you can't just Leave the children. It's a it's a full time job, and even during their nap. So then you're cleaning up after them, or cleaning the dishes that they created, or or preparing their next meal, or whatever it is, or doing the laundry, or whatever. Right. So it's it's like a a full time commitment. The only break that you get from from the children is when they're actually down for the night. So from seven till seven thirty, when they wake up again. And uh, once again, nothing about nothing negative there. I'm just telling you the reality of, of what it's like having children and how our reality has changed. Because nor like before the kids, Mrs. Brixie and I, we would have a lot more free time. But now like, there's very minimal free time. Because now it's, it's 7.15. And for example, me personally, I haven't edited this video yet. And that's usually the way the day goes. So... And now I have to sit down for an hour or an hour and a half or whatever it's going to be and edit and upload this video. And that's going to bring us to 8.45. And then by the time it's 8.45 and I've been up since 7 o'clock, now it's been 14 hours of pretty much working or taking care of the family. And after that, you've got like, you know, three hours left in the day. So it's like, what do I want to do with this three hours? Hmm, do I want to sit here and clean my house? Or do I want to do laundry or do I want to bathe the dogs and brush the dogs? Or do I want to, you know, go and just like go over here and, and vacuum and do this stuff and do that stuff and, you know, get the garbage is ready to put out and pick up the, the dog droppings in the backyard. It's like, I have to do all that stuff. But then I also want, you know, an hour or maybe two hours of free time at the end of the day. And sometimes we really struggle to find those two hours of just like chill and hang out at the end of the day, which is so important to have that like, you know, rest and relax time. But sometimes it's really hard to get, especially when you're, you know, you're managing your own business, like, like Mrs. Brixie and I are, you got a constant upload schedule that always has to be attended to. And then I'm always trying to do more things like, you know, whatever, maybe sponsorships or uh, doing whatnot auctions. So I'm trying to add that. And now, right now, I'm trying to coordinate the uh, the renovation of the warehouse, which is quite taxing indeed. So just trying to get that done. But I think once the warehouse, I'm going to call it the warehouse, but once the new studio 
is developed and, and we're ready to go, I think that's going to change our lives completely. Because once that is set up, I'm going to be able to bring all of the Lego over there. That's going to free up the entire basement. Then I'm going to be able to put all the kids' toys and make that like a kid's playroom down there and try and isolate all of that stuff down there. It's also going to free up like a third of my garage because Brixie has taken up a third of the garage. So once I have that or once whatever we have that space, we're going to be able to utilize the space in the garage and sort of tidy up our house that way. <laughs> and yeah, it's just going to be a lot better because we're sort of bursting at the seams here. It's funny because when we had the kids, we used to have two spare bedrooms where we kept our sort of like our mess, you know, like, oh, this is all the spare furniture that we have, all the spare stuff that we have. And then we have two kids now. So with those two rooms went away and some things like, for example, the sit stand desk, I have a sit stand desk. And I didn't want to get rid of it, but now it's just been like chilling in our hallway upstairs because it was in Millie's bedroom forever. But then now that's Millie's bedroom. So now that sit stand desk has just been like chilling there. And then all of a sudden you put some kids toys on it and then there's kids toys there. And then all of a sudden there's more kids toys on your kitchen table. And then there's not the Lego. Those are adults toys. And then you got more kids toys down here. And then you've got to get everything out of the way of reachable stuff. So then you got this other or the, of reachable area. So that you've got like this random stuff sort of everywhere. You don't know where to put it. It's sort of like displaced from its original home. It's just like one of the funny challenges of having having children and then you got baby gates everywhere so it's a little harder to get through and you're like carrying stuff it, it's it's a funny challenge it's been a fun challenge but honestly it's uh it's changed our lives from what they used to be and it's it's definitely a lot more like maybe not more I'd, I'd say it's more rewarding because you're raising these kids and all of a sudden they can point out a duck and they can uh, you know, point out where their hair is. And I think it's really rewarding to see them grow as humans. I think it's super cool. And, and I, I've been smiling this whole time because obviously I'm really happy with the way things are here at home and with the family and all that. And I just can't wait for this warehouse or the Lego studio to be fully developed so that we can sort of move on to the next chapter of our lives. I think that's going to really unlock the next chapter for the channel and also unlock the the next chapter for our household in general is because it's going to give us more space to do just, or just have better systems set up for raising a family. That's really about it for today. I'm going to get to cleaning with Mrs. Brixie and also editing this video, which will bring me pretty much to sleeping and waking up and repeating. Everybody, thank you so much for coming to my Please make sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for a while.